Hello everyone and welcome back to Taito Ecology and we are here inside of Pyrite Canyon, our desert biome, and we're checking in to see how everybody's been doing and oh my goodness, I think everybody's flowering! <gasps> look at that! Look at these plants! They look so different! I forget that they look different when they're blooming! Oh my gosh, the desert spoons have these like really tall long flowers on them! And look at our cactuses! <gasps> there are flowers on top of our giant cactuses! This is so cool! The desert is in bloom! Oh my goodness. Are you guys flowering? Yeah, apparently these bushes are flowering. <gasps> Look at everybody! They've got these teensy tiny little flowers on them. Well, that's wonderful. That must mean that our populations of various pollinators are doing their job. Power to you, you little ones, our little marine blue flowers. And then we've even got, let's see, zero days left until pollination is needed. <gasps> these guys are going to flower any second now. Go, little barrel cactuses, go. Oh, these guys are flowering. So these guys, oh, that was the grass. The grass is about to flower too. Now that would be really interesting to see. All right. But yes, we are back in Pirate Canyon. It is one of our newest areas. Oh my goodness. Yes, flowers everywhere. Flowers on the cactuses. One of our newest areas. And the last time we left off, let's see, we've got a bobcat that seems to be doing good. So the bobcats are doing well. A little bit hungry. It looks like all I'm seeing are ants everywhere. So ants and a couple armadillos, and here's a rattlesnake population. Have we lost different things? Let's see. Some rattlesnakes have started starving. Armadillos are on low health. King snakes starved. Deer mice were taken out. Desert kangaroos were taken out. Oh no. All right, let's pull back and let's kind of get a bird's eye view at how our desert has been doing. We still have our desert tortoises. That's very exciting. 24 days until they have some babies, which is really cool because one of the achievements you can actually unlock in Taito Ecology and let's see if I can find it, because I like trying to get all of the achievements. It's just a fun little extra thing to do. Everything the light touches. Uh, have a mole deer die of old age. Have a marsh deer die of old age. Here we go. Team tortoise. Have a desert tortoise reach maturity. I'm not sure like how long that takes. It says not started, but maybe it just takes a while before they reach maturity. Is that when they reproduce? Because then it would only be 24 more days. <gasps> that would be really cool. But yeah, we had lots of populations of kangaroo rats and they're gone. So apparently they have died off. Let's put in some agave down here just because we can. And it looks like our bobcats are actually getting very hungry. So if we don't want them to die off, we need to be adding in more things for them to eat. So let's start with the deer mice. We have so many deer mice all over the place in not Kansas, our grasslands area. What? I put them down and they immediately... Oh, the kangaroo rats have just died. <gasps> oh my gosh. Yeah, I think we need to put in a lot more of the small guys. And I would actually love to learn, and one day I'll have to look this up to see if I can like find the facts about it, but I would love to learn how many mice, how many small herbivores like this, the small, small prey items you have per area in a desert, like per square mile. When I look out and see what to me looks like just empty desert with nothing in it, what are other creatures that are out there? Like how many things are actually in there? So let me see. Because that would be really fun. I always love that about my park, but my local park, when I'm out and about in the local park, I know a lot of people go jogging and they're like, oh, I can never see anything. And then if I slow down and start looking in the ground, I'm like, oh, look, there's like a chipmunk. There's a whole bunch of squirrels. There's a whole bunch of birds. Oh my goodness. Look, there's a whole population of like titmice there. There's a bunch of Carolina wrens. Here's a bunch of frogs all in the same square spot that another person walks by and says, I don't see anything. So I would love to speak with like a desert ecologist or a desert scientist one day and have them take me out to an area that I would look over like this and be like oh there's not really anything here and they'd be like look under this leaf there's like these creatures look under this rock here's a snake look over here here's like the tracks of a bobcat so I would love to do that one day that would be really fun and I feel like that's what the desert sort of feels like here flower my little cactus flower that's what it sort of feels like here. So I think I kind of put my bias on it where I'm like, oh, I wouldn't expect there to be a lot of mice. So I don't put down a lot of mice territories. And then as a result, everything starts dying and we need to keep our little bobcats active and going. So let's see, we'll put some down over here too. And then let's make sure they would have some food in the back corner, which means more barrel cactuses. And then maybe one of these sweet acacias. So we'll tuck a few of these guys over here too. 
All right, but it's really funny because actually playing this makes me want to go and learn more about deserts. And I'm not a fan of hot places. I don't do well in hot places. They just make me feel very sick. But I would put up with it if it meant being able to go and just see the amazing wildlife that you could find in a desert. Because it's hard to live without water. It really, really is. So I would love to learn more about that. Do you guys live in the desert? Like, I'm always totally stunned when people are like, yeah, I live in Arizona. Because some parts of Arizona actually get snow and mountains. And some parts of Arizona, like, it's 110 on a good day. And I'm like, no, 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 that's too much for me. But I would love to learn more. All right, let's tuck this guy over here. So there we go. We have our little trail of deer mice over here. And I'm starting to kind of populate their area with some plants. Again, it's a lot more grasses. I'm not trying to make it kind of a grassland. But um, you have to give them something to eat. You know what I mean? Oh, no. I need more mushrooms. There's too much poop. All right. Well, we're on this. We'll get some millipedes put down. We'll get some mushrooms put down. Too much desert poop. Another thing I don't really think about. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I actually would love... Oh, the, these beautiful, beautiful cactuses remind me that maybe in our zoo crafting series, when we start doing desert areas, I definitely want to put uh, some of these cactuses in that have the birds, the woodpeckers, that like to make their homes inside of these places. <gasps> what died? Oh, it's just, a, it's just like the decoration for the detritus in this area is a skull okay i'm just gonna go ahead and casually save this that's fine it's just a skull there's just the mice picking at the bones of a skull over here okay well that's how our desert's doing you guys i think i need to put down more <laughs> what are desert mushrooms like what mushrooms could you find in a desert this is something else i need to research isn't it awesome you guys just stay curious about everything ask yourself constant questions and look up the answers that's how you learn people are always like siri how do you know so much because i'm so curious that's why and then i i turn to google <laughs> So a combination of being curious, turning to Google, and actually grabbing random books from like the nonfiction section uh, in the library. I love doing that and just picking them up and learning something new. All right. And I think we need to add in some more ants, actually, because those mice were coming on in to eat the ants. And we'll add in some moths somewhere over here, too, if I can find a good spot for them. Here, little moths. There you go, guys. And coyotes. Oh, oh and let's put some honeybees in here. Yeah. Some desert honeybees. Hang in there, little guys. I think that you're going to end up having a lot of uh, little tiny little tiny mice try to eat you. But yeah, coyotes. So those would be a large carnivore. I wonder how the proghorn antelope would do over here. I wonder if we can support a population of proghorn antelope with what we've got right now. I kind of want to throw some in. Oh, we should probably throw in some, some uh, jackrabbits too. But yeah, I kind of want to throw in a population of proghorn antelope now. And just see what happens. Uh, let's do a few more barrel cactuses. Because I think they're going to be important. And yeah, I need to start checking in on our zones a little bit more often off screen. So we can build up a big stock of money. A big stock of money. And then come in and just start buying everything. It's going to be really surreal. Wouldn't it be interesting if we're still playing Taito Ecology months later? And then we'll be able to look and see just how much it's changed. That would be so cool. How long, what's the longest you guys, because so many of you have said that like you saved up and you got it, you saw me play it and you're like, oh, I have to try that out. What's the longest you've had one of your areas? I really want to know. Like what's the longest you've had a spot survive? All right, let's come over. I want to put more of these big giant guys in because they're awesome. If I can find a spot to put them down, then he's going down. All right, in you go cactus. And there's so many cactus species too, which always, again, it surprises me. I don't know much about deserts because my natural inclination is to go where the ferns and the humidity and the greenery is. So I tend to study those places a bit more. But I mean, desert ecology and like a lot of the savanna ecology in Africa are really fascinating to me because they're, those are populations where they're having to push and struggle and fight to survive in extreme environments. And you get some really interesting results when those things happen. All right. And I think maybe we could add in some more little um, herbivores down here. Who's this? I thought I saw somebody over here. Oh, it was a mushroom. I think it was just a mushroom like plunking itself down. Let's put in another one of the cactuses up here. And how are we doing? We still have too much poop. Is it your fault, Mr. Tortoise? Are you pooping too much? 
I don't appreciate that silliness. Desert mushrooms. I'm going to have to figure that out. All right. There we go. And yes, I, I just think mushrooms are fascinating. They've just always fascinated me. Oh, we don't have like anything over here. And I wonder if the grass has been spreading on its own again. I feel like it might be. I feel like it might be. All right. Well, let's add in some plants on this side. Because if I'm going to even begin to think about adding in some of the proghorn antelope, we need to make sure they have plenty of the things they want to eat. Like last time, we added in a small herd of proghorn antelope into not Kansas, our grasslands biome. And I am completely amazed. I cannot wait to have so many of those guys all over the place. Are you okay over there, kangaroo rats? <laughs> all right, they're okay. But yeah, I can't wait to have so many of those guys all over the place, but we definitely need to have enough grass for them to eat. And if I want to be able to add in um, the coyotes, we need to make sure we have a healthy proghorn antelope population. That big, beautiful cascade of the pyramid again, the big, beautiful pyramid of food, which is so cool. And it's been so fun to see how many of you guys are like, Siri, I was just learning about that in school. So that's so cool. Let me know what you guys have learned. Like refresh me because what you guys are learning in your classes right now is totally different from what I was being taught when I was in your grade. And the things that I learned, like when I re do current research on current biology and current ecology topics, the stuff that's coming out now is 100% sometimes different. Like the wolf thing, like the fact that there are no... Um, alphas and betas among wolves. That was not what I learned in my first biology class like six years ago in university level. And now that's been thrown out the window and we have a whole new like gigantic chunk of research to redefine how we understand wolf packs. So things change pretty quickly. And I love hearing what you guys are being taught as proper science in your classes now. Sometimes it makes me go, no, that's not right. And it makes me so really sad. No, they're getting sick. What? Millipedes. Millipede faster. Quick, I need more. I need more millipedes. What on earth? Go, 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 go. I guess I can add in, I guess with this many like millipedes and mushrooms, I can add in more, um, oh gosh. I can add in more insectivores maybe. All right, I'm just gonna, we're gonna millipede all over the place because apparently they're able to clean these up. What does the millipede biodex say? Millipedes eat detritus, which is ecological waste matter like dead skin, dead leaves, and other materials that are not directly useful to plants or animals. Millipedes help to break down detritus so that the nutrients can be used by plants, which helps them grow. Though, though bacteria and fungus also play a role in decomposition, millipedes do lend a hand, or several hundred, because they have all their little hands. Oh, that's so cool. Many insectivores consider millipedes to be a tasty treat. Armadillos, turtles, small rodents, and birds are all millipede predators. Oh, it'd be really cool if we could add in birds. That would be awesome. Most millipedes try to protect themselves by curling into a ball or coil. Their backs are much tougher than their undersides, so this tactic works well against smaller predators. Larger predators with sharp beaks or teeth, however, are able to easily crunch the millipede's body and make it into a tasty snack. Dun dun dun! They're very common insects. In fact, there's like the cherry millipede, I think is what it's called. It's all over the place right here where we live in North Carolina right now. I might do like a specimen spotlight on it, even though that sounds kind of boring, but they're very essential. They're crawling around around on the ground with all of their itty bitty little legs, cleaning up all of the waste matter and keeping the forest healthy. So it's worth doing a little specimen spotlight on them for sure. They can be found everywhere on earth except for the poles. There are even some millipedes that can survive in the Arctic Circle. What? What? Now I want to learn about desert mushrooms and Arctic millipedes. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. The word millipede means thousand feet in Latin. Millipedes don't actually have a thousand feet, but they do have a lot of them. There are over 12,000 species of millipede in the world, and millipedes are some of the oldest land animals. So that is interesting. All right, well, we'll learn about the reproduction in a minute. <gasps> Look at the millipedes, magical millipedes. Dun, dun, dun. They've come in and they've cleaned this area up. Oh, I'm so thankful for you, little millipedes. You have, you have saved my land. Oh, look at them. They're so cute. They're so tiny. All right, so the millipedes have come in and saved the desert. And now I'm going to go ahead. And because we added in so many millipedes, I'm going to put in some armadillos. <laughs> so here we go. Now we're going to have some armadillos rolling around. Oh, dear. But the armadillos are an important um, important part of the whole system too. But armadillos are really hard to eat, in my opinion, because they're very well defended. Um, here, you go right there, little armadillo. How's this population doing? <gasps> There's only one left! Okay, so it looks like we need to add in some armadillo populations anyway to help balance out whoever's eating all of them. 
All right, yay, we earned a little bit more money. I love how the more you add in and can keep alive, the more money you get to earn for it. All right, we'll add in some more ant populations. Whoops, did I just put it down there? All right, and we'll add in more millipede populations. Awesome. So there are desert millipedes. There's even Arctic millipedes. I've learned something new today. Thank you, Taito Ecology. And then let's see for the armadillos. Let's get down here, find an armadillo. Those are mice. That's a mouse. This is possibly a dead mouse. <laughs> Goodness. Uh, these are a lot of mice. Let's add in some snakes over to this side. Aha! And here we have a bobcat patrolling the edges and armadillos. All right. And what does it say about who eats them? Predators. Armadillos are an important prey item for many larger creatures, including cougars, eagles, wolves, bobcats, and jaguars. Baby armadillos are particularly vulnerable to predators. Their shells are much softer than the shells of adults, making them easier to attack and kill. To ward off predators, armadillos retreat into their burrows, block the entrance with their back, curl up, and brace themselves so that they are more difficult to remove. Yes, I remember this. And then we also learned that they jump into the air to try to scare predators sometimes. I'm going to have to like Google that on YouTube now. Jumping armadillos to see what it looks like because it sounds a little bit alarming to say the least but we'll have to look that up so the bobcats are still roaming around hopefully doing okay this beautiful desert willow is flowering right now which is really cool a group of deer mice has died oh no how's this group doing 14 12 okay there's actually not so many deer mice right now i think with the what kangaroo rats why why are you dying why are you? Seeds. Seeds. They do not like to eat succulent plants like cacti or agave, but they will eat the leaves of plants like the bush. Okay, let's give them some of those bushes. Where's the bush? King snakes, low population. Oh gosh. Oh no. Sage bush. Um, is that going to be good enough? Will that stand in for you? Oh, I think. Oh no, the king snakes just died. Why? They needed more other snakes to eat. Oh, there it is. Here's the bush. All right, quick, get these bushes in here. Okay, I need to get these bushes. No, for crying out loud. I need more bushes. There we go. No, there. Wait, okay. Save the deer mice. Save the deer mice. We need more of these bushes. Maybe that's what was wrong. Maybe they were starving to death versus being overeaten because they didn't have the kinds of bushes that they eat. So that may have been a problem that I didn't even recognize. Gosh, our desert is really getting pretty populated. <laughs> All right, let's see. Come on, little ones. You can do it. Look, I have... Oh, come on. Get up, little guy. You can make it. He's dead. <laughs> he can't make it. He's he's actually dead. Never mind. He's, he's not going to make it, you guys. He's dead. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, well... Um... Oh, my. They're dying. They're dying. Okay, and some of them are starting to make it. So that might be why our deer mice weren't doing very well. Are you guys not doing very well either? So they have some of those other bushes. So that's what, aha, see, they have just one of those bushes. Now I know you have to have these kinds of bushes to keep the deer mice happy. There's another great example of, I just kind of took for, for granted that if I had some green leafy matter, then the little mouse would eat it. No, they would not eat it. These mice will eat it because apparently they'll pretty much eat everything. What do the, the deer mice actually eat compared to the kangaroo rats? All right, let's see. They're omnivores. They eat fruits, nuts, leaves, and other greenery, as well as small insects, including my ants. They're very hard on my ant and my bee populations, it seems. But yeah, so those guys are fine. And meanwhile, my deer mice, not so fine. The, or my deer king, kangaroo mice. What on earth am I trying to say? Kangaroo rats were not fine because they won't just eat anything. They eat a very specific kind of thing. So that kind of goes to show that you can't fall into those biases with like, well, it's this kind of creature. It should eat this because sometimes they won't. Sometimes they'll only eat a very specific thing. Like pandas, they'll only eat bamboo. You would look at them and think, why don't you just eat more fruit? Nope, they need lots of bamboo, which they're very bad at digesting too, but we'll get into pandas another day. That would be another kind of headache if we had a biome where we had to take care of pandas, but also amazing. All right, so that is pretty good for Pyrite Canyon right now. And I'm not sure how I feel about trying to add in proghorn antelope at this stage because I feel like I need a lot, 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 lot more um, like the joint first. I just need like a lot more grass. 
but this is a desert area and the pronghorn antelope do have a huge range so let's go ahead and we'll put in as much grass as i can possibly like tuck all over here and then try adding in maybe some pollinators so we'll like spread grass all over here try to keep pace with the little recharger thing filling up and then after I do that, we'll leave in one population of proghorn antelope and see what happens to that population when we come back after three more months passing here in Pirate Canyon. So Pirate Canyon seems to be doing okay. And I can't wait to add in some of like the big guys. And the proghorn antelope are just so cute. All right, last one there. And then proghorn antelope. Let's find where you're going to go. Proghorn antelope. There we go. And we'll just get like a little boost. Boink. And we're going to add in one population of proghorn antelope right here. All right. And there we go. And we're going to leave these little guys. They're going to wander around. They're herbivores who eat grasses, leaves, shrubs, and other greenery. Sagebrush is one of their favorite foods. They'll, they'll eat just about anything green, including cactuses. So hopefully they'll do okay. And hopefully the deer rats will be able... Or the deer rats? What? <laughs> I cannot separate the deer mice and the kangaroo rats for some reason. But hopefully the kangaroo rats will be able to recover now that we have added in their new bushes. And we'll have to check in on them because this is this is really amazing, you guys. It's really amazing and it's so pretty. It really is. And there's so much death everywhere. So we'll have to see how the bobcats handle the populations that we've got going around. I wonder if the bobcats just prefer eating kangaroo rat. Hmm. All right, well, we'll check in with these guys later, and I hope everybody will be okay. I hope your guys' uh, biomes are doing well. Let me know how they're doing in the comments, because I'm so curious. It actually is super inspiring to read what you've done and how you've done it, the fun moments. It's not about doing everything 100% correct. It's also just about embracing the experience and being able to learn from it so let me know like yeah i tried putting in like 800 ants and it just collapsed and it was kind of hilarious and this and this and this just let me know those kinds of things because i love hearing them and i'll see you guys next time bye, -bye.